else but I'll do this. You ready? Woo! And our friends served our communities with the most giving hearts. They served with passion for the people they were called to protect. Tonight we all pause to honor each of them. We honor especially their families whose lives have changed. Lord, give them the hope and the strength they need as we recall each of our heroes that they may experience comfort in knowing that we were blessed to have each of them as part of our lives. Each of these officers taught us that there's no greater love than to lay down your life for others. May this evening ease some of our pain and loss and bring each of us hope for a world that can be better because of the service that these men gave as they put on their uniforms each day to protect us. We make this prayer in your name, Lord. Amen. Good evening. On behalf of the Louisiana Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Board, it is my privilege to welcome you to our 15th Annual Candlelight Vigil and Memorial Service. Tonight we gather here at the Memorial to remember and honor the officers' names who are enshrined here, but we also want to recognize the surviving family members who have been left behind. Thank you to all the survivors who have joined us tonight. At this time, I would like to ask all the survivors to please stand and allow us to recognize you for the sacrifice that you and your families have made. Thank you. 2015 has been a challenging one for law enforcement and for the memorial. In Louisiana, we had eight line of duty deaths. This is the most we've had in a single year since we dedicated the memorial. This past July, we held a service on the memorial grounds for New Orleans Police Officer Vernell Brown. Following this service, under the cover of darkness, vandals came to the memorial and damaged the eternal flame. The memorial was able to withstand the winds of Hurricane Katrina 10 years prior, but not the wrath of those who disrespect our public safety professionals. Through generous donations from our supporters, including Mayor Mitch Langer, who's on the stage with us tonight, we are able to repair the memorial and light the eternal flame again. Tonight we are officially dedicating 13 officers, including eight officers who made the ultimate sacrifice in 2015, and another five historical deaths dating back to 1863. These officers are now listed among 454 of their colleagues on these walls. To our law enforcement community, thank you for your service and for carrying forward the work of the fallen officers that we honor this evening. May God continue to bless and protect our peacekeepers and their families. Thank you. And as was mentioned, New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu joins us tonight, and he'd like to say a few words to you. Good evening to everybody. That is it, all the law enforcement from afar and near. We are all, as I say, one team that helps keep our people safe. Matt, I want to thank you uh, to the friends and family of all of the fallen officers. I know that we're going to uh, remember 13 officers uh, that have been taken from us. I'd like to, as a matter of personal privilege also, just keep in our prayers Charles Keating IV, who was uh, a veteran, a Navy SEAL member that lost his life this week uh, in a firefight in Iraq. Uh, against ISIS, and if we can keep him and his family in our prayers, uh, I would appreciate it. The chief and I, just this past week, uh, participated in a graduation ceremony of the newest police recruit class, and we started another one. And always during our talks with them, we talk to them and thank them about signing up, showing up, and being willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. And yet here we sit today, having to remember 
our brothers and sisters that actually made it. We hope it never happens, but we know it's always possible. It's said many times that in the United States of America, freedom is not free. And some people pay with their lives. And your family members did that. In the city of New Orleans, and I know that each one of the different police departments will remember their own. NLPD Officer Darrell Holloway, Burnell Brown, Hano Police Department Officer James Bennett, uh, Sheriff's Office Rodney Condell, uh, and of course tonight Captain Thomas Albert, who literally worked himself to death, is remembered here tonight. Sometimes you don't always get to know personally all of uh, the officers, but I knew Rodney Tom as well, and his son is with us tonight. I can remember poignant moments when Rodney Thomas was working, protecting the Carrollton playground where kids played and grew up, or driving around the second district, and have fond remembrances of sitting there talking to him while he helped keep the community safe. This individual, along with all of our fallen brothers and sisters here, made up the adage of community policing, being part of the community. He and all of the other officers that were taken from us loved what they did, were willing to sacrifice their time away from their families, and to make the ultimate sacrifice to protect us. And for that, we will be forever grateful. Our prayers and our thoughts are with you. I thank you again on behalf of the people of the city for what it is that you guys have done and the sacrifice that you made. And our thoughts and prayers will be with you always. God bless you all. Community. He and all of the other officers that were taken from us loved what they did, were willing to sacrifice their time away from their families, and to make the ultimate sacrifice to protect us. And for that, we will be forever grateful. Our prayers and our thoughts are with you. I thank you again on behalf of the people of the city for what it is that you guys have done and the sacrifice that you made. And our thoughts and prayers will be with you always. God bless you all. Um, hi. Like they said, I'm Roddy Thomas um, the second. My father was uh, Officer Roddy Thomas the first, who was killed in the line of duty on July 7, 2013. Today I just want to share with you uh, some thoughts I had about him and what he made in my life and everyone that, we, that he loved. When I think of Officer Roddy Thomas, I think of my father. I think of how he loved coffee, breakfast food like blueberry pancakes, bacon, and hash browns with everything in it. I think of the long talks we had about anything and everything. I think about how my sister could always give him the perfect gifts like a coffee thermos because it kept his coffee hot. I think about how he teased my teased his granddaughter with songs and his grandson got hooked on blueberries because he loved them so much. I think about as a child he never liked to tell me no. He would say stuff like not right now or another time. But if he really wanted to say no, he would say, go ask your mama. <laughs> Rodney Thomas was not just a father, he was also a husband. I can think of the times my mom and I were together, he would call her just to talk. They would be on the phone like teenagers, laughing. I could never understand how my dad could tell my mom the same jokes, and she would think it was funny every time. She said it's because she remembered, she never could remember the punchline, but more than that, it made him happy to tell jokes. Rodney Thomas was also a dedicated son. He loved and adored his mother. He always had her best interests in mind. He always tried to provide everything she needed. My father came from a big family. He had 11 siblings, five sisters and six brothers. He always liked when the family came together. He loved Christmas, and he made sure we would get together every year to sing carols and drink eggnog that he made from his special recipe. Rodney Thomas loved being an officer. He took so much pride in the title, uniform, and badge. He loved to talk to people. He loved to help people and never or liked the spotlight. 
I remember asking him why did he want to become a police officer. He said he wanted to positively impact his community. I remember my dad and I going to a fast food restaurant, and this young man in his 20s came from the back just to shake his hand. The guy looked at my dad and said, see, I got a job. I'm trying to do the right thing. After we left, I asked my dad who that was. He said it was a young man who got into some trouble, but is trying to turn his life around after a conversation we had while I had him in custody. My dad wanted everyone to be their best. My father also was a God-loving, hard-praying man. My dad and I sang in the male chorus at Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. He loved ministering to people and fellowshipping with other God-fearing men. I remember my dad reading the Bible and telling me stories from the Bible that he made it so interesting. I also remember him making me read the Bible and do a report for punishment. My father believed in the power of prayer. We say grace over every meal, even at family gatherings. I can remember my dad praying with his praying um, for anybody that he loved. I can remember him praying on the phone with his, with one of my aunts when her life when things were going wrong in her life. Officer Roger Thomas was never a wealthy man, but he was always giving. He gave of himself. That made him a rich man, not with money, but with life. I must say I miss him, but I am proud to have him as a father and a role model. I know my father wasn't a perfect person, but I always thought he was a perfect father. Thank you. Orleans Parish Sheriff Marlon Gustin to honor Deputy Rodney Condon. Of course, it's never easy to lose anybody especially to lose one of your own. Uh, Deputy Kondo was a great colleague and a friend to his co-workers. We have several of his co-workers here. It's Major Winfield, Captain Ruiz, Lieutenant Holmes. They all described Deputy Kondo as a solid, dependable worker. He spent 16 years of his life working for the Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office. Deputy Condo joined the Sheriff's Office in September 1989. He did a nine-year stretch, and then he took a break and came back to us in 2008. Graduated from the Post Academy in 2009. He worked in the old parish prison, dealing with our most difficult inmates and he did so in a professional manner that always resulted in good evaluations from his supervisors. But more than that, he was a good friend to many of his colleagues. So, Mrs. Condal, while we are sad saddened that he's no longer with us, Deputy Rodney Condal is an example for all of us. He set a standard for decency and service that we should all emulate. I want to thank especially the Law Enforcement Memorial, uh, Melanie Canatella and its Executive Director, Officer Patan, for honoring our fallen hero. I want to thank Deputy Condal's widow, Andrea Condal, and the entire Condal family for their grace and their sharing under these difficult circumstances. On behalf of all of the men and women of the Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office who are gathered here tonight and those who are not here, I want the family to know that we will always remember Deputy Rodney Condal. We are deeply honored that you would share him with the OPSO family. So tonight, I want to express my appreciation for Deputy Kondo. His watch did not end on January 28, 2015, because he continues to live through us. And now I'd like to introduce Chief Robert Anderson of the Housing Authority of New Orleans to honor Officer James Arthur Bennett. 
Thank you. Um, at James' service, I quoted the words, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. A quote from Matthew 5, 9, which can be found inscribed at the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C., where over the, na uh, the names of over 20,000 law enforcement officers are remembered by being etched in our nation's glorious history. Many of us will gather next week to honor James, who I know is a peacemaker and who I know is a child of God. James' mother, Chung, his brother Anthony, also a brother, officer of the Seattle Police Department, his sister Monica, his son Justin, who are all with us here today, allowed us to sh share James for two years with the Housing Authority. In honor of James, his badge number 119 was retired and will never again be worn on our department. Unfortunately, many of us never really get to know our comrades as well as we, at work as well as we should. There are many things I learned about James, unfortunately, after his passing, but one thing I did know about James from day one was his love for his family, particularly his mother. James was a devoted son who constantly talked about his family, but I never knew how supportive and caring he was of his mother until I spent some quiet time with Ms. Chung and listening about how she raised her family. It was also clear that James had a passion for police work. I enjoyed hearing stories from his brother Anthony, Detective Vega, Captain Kevin Kwan, they were all reminiscent about the good old days patrolling on the West Bank. Of course, they had some funny stories, some sad stories, but it talked about the brotherhood that these four officers, uh, you know, shared with each other. I also knew that James enjoyed powerlifting, but I didn't know that he also liked to build models of military memorabilia, such as planes and tanks. The pain that we still feel caused by this senseless, brutal act has not diminished, but I can assure you that our law enforcement community will not rest until the individual responsible was brought to justice. The Housing Authority of New Orleans Police Department continues to honor James' memory daily by continuing to provide protection and service to our residents and tenants. To my brothers and sisters in arms in the law enforcement community, our profession is being challenged like no other time in history. But I do have faith when we meet these challenges, become stronger, more confident, more intelligent, more professional law enforcement officers. So on behalf of the Bennett family in Hanno, I want to thank everyone who has and continues to help you the deeds, thoughts, and prayers. May God bless James, the Bennett family, all of our fallen officers and survivors who are here today. State of Louisiana, the city of New Orleans, and God continue to bless the United States. Thank you. Always a tough time. Um, just as tough today as it was last year, because on June 20th of 2015, Officer Daryl Holloway was serving his community. He was transporting a prisoner that someone else had arrested, and that prisoner was in the rear of his car and had a weapon concealed on his person. And while Officer Holloway was transporting that prisoner, that prisoner managed to crawl between the space in the shield, struggled with Officer Holloway while he drove that car, shot Officer Holloway, which caused him to crash into a pole on Claiborne Avenue near Legion Field. That subject escaped and was apprehended and arrested the next day, but Officer Holloway died at that scene. Um, his death not only shocked the New Orleans Police Department, but it shocked the entire city of New Orleans and the surrounding area. Because Officer Holloway um, was loved not only by members of the police department, but to our surprise was loved by almost every citizen in the city, people who he had met over the past 23, 24 years, who he apparently touched and shaped their life and their view of him in some way, loved him and came out in support of him. We saw a community rally around a police officer, though he were a celebrity. And in many ways, he was. He was loved just that much because everywhere he worked, and he started with me in the 6th District when I first met him in the 90s. And so not only did I work with him, but we were friends. But everywhere he worked, he touched people. And people came out in support of him, young and old, of all colors, of all neighborhoods, telling us how wonderful he was. He was the epitome of what we say community policing is all about, what a community police officer is all about because the community spoke up for him and came to tell us how good he was. 
While we knew how good he was, we didn't have to say it because the community said it for us. And so to the family, um, our prayers and our thoughts continue to be with you. And thank you for allowing us to share a part of his life and for allowing him to serve the community that loved him so deeply. Once again, Superintendent Michael Harrison to honor Officer Vernell Brown. This was an extremely tough time because while the New Orleans Police Department and the entire city, this entire region, while we were grieving the death of Officer Holloway just a few days later, on July 12th of 2015, Officer Vernell Brown Jr was on Highway 90 at the I-10 split outside of his car investigating a vehicle fire and training two recruits. When two cars had a collision, one of those cars veered off the road and struck Officer Brown. He was severely injured and he remained in a coma until he succumbed to his injuries five days later on July 17th. And again, this shot the New Orleans Police Department, but shocked the community at large because he too was beloved by this community. A young man so full of life, I met him because he and I were members of the same church and I knew him personally. Everybody loved him. He was involved in youth. He was involved in civic activities with his fraternity, dedicated his time to helping others. Actually gave up a brilliant career of being an engineer to come and serve the citizens of New Orleans as a member of the New Orleans Police Department, where he did for 17 years. And while we grieve for Officer Holloway, we then begin to grieve for the death of Officer Vernon Brown. And while this great man served the city for 17 years, we are eternally grateful that your son, your brother, your father, served with dignity and honor. We love you and our prayers and thoughts remain with you. And you're always, you're always, you will always be a part of the New Orleans Police Department family. Now from the Shreveport Police Department, Assistant Chief Wayne Smith to Honor Officer Thomas LaValle. Well, good evening. I'm Assistant Chief Wayne Smith and uh, with the Shreveport Police Department. I stand here before you today with a heavy heart and almost overwhelming feeling of inadequacy. How can I in such a short time, the short time that we have here together this evening and with just mere words at my disposal, express and articulate the powerful emotions that have pervaded the lives of the Shreveport Police family and of the citizens on the night of August the 5th, 2015, around 21, 26 hours, when an officer keyed his portable radio and clearly spoke the words that no police officer or anyone in public service ever want to hear. Shots fired, officer down. How could any of us have known back on that normal summer night that a seemingly random, cowardly act of violence would leave us forever changed, stunned and mourning the loss of one of our own, Officer Thomas LaValle? Well, as evening began and progressed in a normal manner as it normally did with Officer LaValle performing his duties as a public servant to perfection. That was one of the key traits to him. He believed so much in perfection. At around 2116 hours, headquarters received a call, a report of a suspicious person from a neighbor in the area that he patrolled. And the neighbor went on to say, that he had been asked to call the police by his next door neighbor because there was a male in the kitchen of the neighbor's house that was threatening and fighting 
some of the other residents. They asked that the police come very quietly because they were afraid he may have a weapon and an outstanding warrant. Two officers were dispatched to that location and Officer Valley was the first to arrive. Upon his arrival, he was ambushed by suspect Grover Cannon, who had concealed himself in the residence. Officer Valley was shot several times by that assassin and passed away a short time later. The assassin, Grover Cannon, fled the scene uninjured and remained at large for just a little while, but was captured a little bit later and are now awaiting trial. You know, there's not even one among us here today who knows exactly what tomorrow holds. So I stand here not in complete sadness, but to celebrate the amazing life of Officer Thomas LaValle as I personally knew him. For those of you who weren't fortunate enough to know Officer LaValle, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a great man. A great man who gave everything in service for his fellow man. Professionally, Officer Thomas was a consummated law enforcement officer. He was always training, always preparing himself mentally and physically to do the job he loved so well. And do the job well he did. He was truly a policeman's policeman in our definition. From the beginning, and I know these to be facts because I hired him, he stood out in the academy, graduated with honor, distinguished pistol expert. That's the kind of guy he was. Throughout his career, Officer Thomas had earned the reputation among his peers and his supervisors as being a top-notch officer. He had the respect of not only those he worked with, but also with those whom he served to protect, the citizens of our wonderful community. He aggressively and proactively patrolled his area to make our residents and our city safe. He always had a smile on his face, was always quick to laugh, and made others do so very easily. He had a charming personality that was so magnetic, and his enthusiastic attitude was infectious around everyone that he met. I believe we, we all should live lives that matter and that's exactly what Officer Thomas did. With all of his acts of integrity, compassion, courage, sacrifice, and the things that he did to enrich, empower, and encourage others to emulate his wonderful acts. You know, there are things in our lives we'll never understand, no matter how much we analyze them, no matter how much we think them all over, they're just beyond our comprehension. Loss of life is, is just that. So today, I and the citizens of Shreveport have chosen to remember Officer Thomas J. LaValle forever in our memories. We will remember him for the valuable contributions that he made to our community, for paying the ultimate sacrifice for our safety for being a person of great nobility, one that I knew personally that had those fine qualities that people love to admire, qualities such as courage, honor, integrity, and a commitment to caring for others. Thomas built his legacy with a dedication to public service. I am so proud to have served with Thomas and can unequivocally say everyone who knew him, without a doubt, is a better person because of the life that he lived.
Thank you very much. Now, Captain Chris Guillory, Louisiana State Police, to honor Senior Trooper Stephen Vincent. I stand before you today to honor Senior Trooper Stephen Vincent and, and tell you a little bit about him. He comes from a large family that's dedicated to law enforcement. He has two brothers that are in law enforcement. One of them's a trooper, Terrell, and his other brother, Keith, the Chief of Police in Highway, Louisiana. Stephen began his law enforcement career with the Lake Charles Police Department in 1992. On November 30th of 2003, Stephen started the Louisiana State Police Academy and became a trooper. As a senior trooper, Stephen always tried to help his fellow troopers. He was very precise when it came to his uniform, vehicle, and work. He was always eager to help people. He had a profound sense of honor, integrity, determination, which always reflected in his evaluations. As Stephen's commander and friend, this is what I remember of Stephen when I think about him. Now, the first thing, I don't know who's responsible for this, if it's Catherine or Mr. and Mrs. Vincent, but he always had a smile on his face. I don't care what was going on, you'd walk up to Stephen and he'd hit you with that bright white smile. So I don't know what you did to, to make him always happy, Catherine, uh, but Every time I saw him, he always had a smile. Some of his accomplishments that uh, I remember having him is they had a bolo uh, that went out over the, over the police radio, and then Channel 7 also covered it, and they gave a description of two bank robbers in the Lake Charles area. Uh, about a day later, uh, Stephen's making a traffic stop on the interstate, and uh, as he's talking to him, he realizes, hey, these are the two guys that were on TV that, that robbed a bank, and he ended up catching two bank robbers. So when that occurred, I was very proud of him uh, for, for doing that, and, and I think they tied it to a string of, of robberies that occurred uh, between Louisiana and Texas. In uh, 2012, he had a traffic stop that led to the largest cocaine seizure in the state prior to 2012. He really had a big smile on his face when he got that. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some of the photographs. Later that year, he received the Top Gun Award. Uh, that's kind of like, uh, the, uh, it's a statewide award that uh, our criminal patrol units uh, give out to the, to the member that had the, the largest number of seizures and arrests for that calendar year, and Stephen uh, won it that year. And uh, I mean, I'm telling you, I was very proud for him that day. Stephen was always courteous, respectful, and professional with the public which reflected in his personal service to the community. I said, Stephen, if you didn't know him, he always had a smile on his face. On Sunday, August 23, 2015, Senior Trooper Vincent was responding to a call of a vehicle driving erratically in southwest Louisiana. Senior Trooper Vincent located the vehicle that he was dispatched to in a ditch. When he was trying to help the man, Senior Trooper Vincent lost his life while serving the citizens of Louisiana. This was a profound loss to his family, Catherine, his son Ethan, Keith, Terrell, Renee, Miranda, and his mother and father, James and Mildred. Throughout his life, I believe Stephen sought to give rather than receive. His family, peers, friends, and community consistently benefited from Stephen's commitment to others. There are a couple of people who don't have representatives here tonight, so I will read and then following that, I'll invite the uh, family members to accept. Wandre Gilliam Sr., General Police Department, end of watch, 4-8-2015. Officer Gilliam was attempting to stop a vehicle for a traffic violation that refused to stop. A vehicle pursuit ensued, at which time Officer Gilliam's vehicle overturned. Officer Gilliam was transported to Iberia General Hospital, where he succumbed to his injuries. Accepting on behalf of his family is his spouse LaToya, his mother LaWanda, and his children, Wantasia and Dontarius. Henry Andres Nelson, Sunset Police Department. End of watch 8-26-2015. Officer Nelson was responding to a domestic disturbance where three women had been stabbed by a male subject at a home in Sunset. 
When Officer Nelson arrived, the subject was able to gain control of the officer's weapon and fatally shoot him. The suspect fled the scene and barricaded himself inside of a gas station, but was successfully apprehended by the SWAT team. Officer Nelson was airlifted to a hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. Accepting on his behalf tonight, his daughter Alyssa Thomas. The plaque is being presented by Melba Gilbo with the Sunset Police Department. Now I'd like to introduce retired Lieutenant Mavis Johnson of the Baton Rouge Police Department, who will perform a special law enforcement version of Amazing Grace. Thank you. 
and now the past remembrances. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial and the Louisiana Memorial research historical deaths that have been forgotten over time. Once these deaths are verified as line of duty deaths, these officers are formally remembered for their sacrifice. Tonight we honor five officers who will finally be recognized on our walls for paying the ultimate sacrifice. First, Assistant Chief Wayne Smith with the Shreveport Police Department to honor Officer James Rosser, end of watch, 226-1873. I guess as everyone can tell, uh, I came along about 86 years or so uh, after this had occurred, but you know, I read a lot and study a lot about the history of Shreveport and our police department, and this gentleman uh, surfaced as one of our best. Back in those days, uh, as with some other cities, uh, we had difficulty with, uh, with plagues that seemed to spread. And one of his duties that day, as I understand it, was to transport someone who was ill to a place of quarantine to keep others safe. And as a result uh, of that effort, he himself became ill and infected and later succumbed to that. But I know in my heart, without have ever met him, but from the things that I read, uh, he was a wonderful and dedicated public servant, just as so many others have been. Now, once again, Superintendent Michael Harrison of the New Orleans Police Department to honor Captain Thomas Albert, end of watch 221-1979. Representing his family is his wife, Miss Gloria Albert. Throughout the history of the New Orleans Police Department, there have always been people who stood out and were unique and showed themselves worthy of true honor. And in 1979, many members of the New Orleans Police Department were on strike. But there were some who showed up every single day to serve their community. Every single day, while many were on strike, Captain Thomas Albert showed up to work. And while that strike lasted over two weeks, he performed his duties upwards of 20 hours a day. And on February 21st, 1979, after working, about 20 hours. He suffered from a heart attack and passed away while giving his service to the citizens of New Orleans. And for that, he will be further remembered. Albert Guidry, Rain Police Department, end of watch, 8 8 1943. Officer Guidry was shot and killed after responding to a domestic disturbance. Accepting on behalf of the department is Lieutenant Ryan Charles. Donnie Use Sr., Rain Police Department, end of watch 914-1936. Officer Use was stabbed while attempting to arrest an escaped convict. Despite being stabbed, he was able to fatally wound his aggressor. Accepting on behalf of the department, Lieutenant Ryan Charles. Town Marshal William Lee, Kentwood Police Department. End of watch 10 14 1902. Marshall Lee arrested and fined a subject $50 for selling whiskey illegally. Several weeks after this arrest, Marshall Lee was walking in front of the subject's store when he was shot with a 38 caliber rifle, fatally wounding him. Accepting on behalf of the Kentwood Police Department is Chief Michael Casaruni Sr. Now we'll have the wreath laying ceremony by members of the Memorial Bar Board and agency representatives. Never count that gold. 
It's amazing how a simple two-colored shape can say so much. To some, it's only a black rectangle with a thin blue line in the middle. To others, this symbol speaks a thousand words. It holds the stories of life on the beat, roll call romantics, bonds that cannot be broken, and unfortunately, tears that were shed over co-workers who have made the ultimate sacrifice. The top part of the rec rectangle represents the good. You, me, our children, members of society who live a normal everyday life. The bottom represents evil those who live among us with ill intentions, those who cause harm to others, and the most important part of this symbol, symbol, the thin blue line, which represents the officers who serve and protect our communities daily, the ones who stand between good and evil. The law enforcement community is a family. When an officer pins on his or her badge each day, he doesn't do it for the money, the status, or the power. They put on the badge to better their communities, to make a difference, to protect you and me. They display courage, even when they are afraid. Courage is not the absence of fear, rather the conquest of fear. An officer does not think twice before running towards danger. And while running towards it, he also understands why you are running from it. The thin blue line gets bent every time an officer dies. We are one. We are strong. We may bend, but we will not break. The thin blue line is scarred for the many who have died keeping evil at bay. The thin blue line may stretch, but it will never be broken. It will never be broken because of those men and women who have the courage to stand up in the face of danger and put their lives on the line every day for you and for me. And I'd like to introduce Deputy Michael Brooks from the Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office. He will sing God Bless America. God bless America, this land that I love, yes, stand beside her and guide her through the night with your light from above. From the mountain to the prairie to the ocean wide with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. If you know it, sing it with me. God bless America. That's right. This land that I love. Yeah, I hear you, brother Richie. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with your light from above. Sing. From the mountain to the prairie. That's right. To the ocean, white with foam, yes, God bless America, it's my home, sweet, take it high, home, God bless America, yeah, it's my 